So, you will complete the segmentation side of your project. Hopefully it's correct. Now what you need to do, you've done targeting as well. Which industry you're going to target? Maybe not you. And now you're going to do positioning. That's what we've just covered, so now you're going to do positioning. Ta-da! Theory. And now, practice. Cool, huh? Well, I find it cool. Anyway, so the first thing you need to do is list your attributes. Just like you've done. List the attributes that your clients, consumers, market is looking for in a person like you, a marketer. Remember? That's what we're focusing on. Remember? Yes? List the attributes. Then, list the competing brands and explain how they are perceived. So, I'll give you an example from my own life, which might help you. So, if I had to do this for my uh, uh, industry that I work in, which is education, I would write, did you guys ever watch that video where I go through this, the plan and I explain it from my perspective, education, maybe that was helpful to you. <laughs> Anyways, I'll continue with that in that light. If I had to list the attributes for someone in my profession, it would probably be well qualified, would be one of them. And the other one would be research, uh, research, um, research experience, would be another one for being a lecturer. The other one would obviously be teaching experience. Um, What else? I guess developmental uh, in nature. You know, you want to let someone who's going to develop students, not just mark their papers. And so anyway, so on and so forth, I would list all the attributes. Then I would choose the top two uh, that the industry is looking for. And here at CPUT, the top, I guess the top two. I would explain why, I guess, okay, I wouldn't only choose the top two, I would explain why each one of them is important, and then I would probably rank them as well. I would say, well, CPUT, what's most important to get a job at this point is um, research output. Uh, actually, it's, it's, a, a, it's a higher qualification, which is like a master's or a, or a PhD, and uh, research well, output, which is like articles, journal articles, very important. Um, sadly, they don't care much anymore about teaching experience and uh, stuff like that. That's what they care about, research. But, yeah, research output, like journal, for my industry. It's like, uh, like, like, uh, like papers, like journal articles, like papers, like, uh, like research that's been written up into a special document. You Don't worry about that. Um, and then, um, probably, okay, this is what it used to be. It used to be um, uh, industry experience, which I still think is important. And um, teaching experience wasn't so important, but more just this developmental heart, you know, I would call it. Anyway, so I would write about that. Then, I would talk about my competitors. Now, who are my competitors? Maybe I would look at the people in my department that I work with or other people around. And um, I wouldn't just look at my colleagues that are the same age as me. I would also look at, no, no, people now who are going to be, uh, uh, um, oh, you mean for, your, for you? In your case, it would be students. In my case, it wouldn't be. My competitors would be other lecturers, other people teaching marketing one for example, okay? Some of my competitors, oh, the other thing that people look for, which sadly, I'm on the bottom of the list, is a BEE status. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, unless I go for a tan or a bit. But, um, so that's also something they look for. Sorry? No, they don't specifically want to, well, they don't look for disability, but they don't, Okay. Is disability part of I don't think you're more favorable if you're dis disabled. You're not less favorable either, but anyways. 
Uh, so then um, I would look at my competitors out there in the industry, and I would look at people, I would look at maybe like this person who has, uh, uh, um, I'd list all different people's names, different types of people. People with lots of, lots of research experience, which I don't have. So I look at someone like that as a competitor. Then I would look at someone who is a, a, a BEE status, high BEE status, right? And the highest BEE status is to be a black woman, as far as I know. So all the black ladies in the house, you got that in your favor. Yeah, I would look at specific people. So I would mention, let's, uh, let's just use their different names. I'll just give an example. Uh, let's say that one person's name is uh, Joe. And in brackets, I would put Joe. It's a type of person. It's difficult with it when it comes to people. Let's just say Joe is my person, and Joe has lots of research experience. That's what differentiates him. Then I'm looking at um, uh, what's a, 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 a good name? Tandy. Tandy is a high BE status. That's what she has on her side. Then. I'm going to look at uh, who? Kirtley. Kirtley has lots of industry experience. That's what differentiates him, right? And so on and so forth, I would list my different competitors. Yes? Who would also be applying for a job like mine. Then I would map my competitors and I would choose what is important over here. I've got this in your thingy already. What is important Yeah. What are the two important kind of things? Maybe I'll even use four. Did you know that you could use four? You could use four. I'll show you how. Look, we've got four there. Okay, let's do uh, high uh, BEEs over there. Then we're going to do... Um, okay, everyone is, should be qualified. High... Uh, okay, then I'm going to put high research here. Oh, now I'm teaching you something new. High research, and then I would write um, teaching experience, high teaching, and on the other side, I would put Oh, yeah, I would also put high. What's the next one? Hmm. Hmm? Why is it all saying high? You know, you can also do it like this. Um, because if high is there for BE, then low would be there. If high is there, then low would be there. You understand? So it's just, it's just, we're adding more variables now. Yeah. So high, um, the last one I would go here is uh, yes we don't have experience yet okay good now then I would take my my uh, people where are they Joe hello Joe it's number A competitor A lots of research experience so there's Joe Joe has lots of research experience so I'll put Joe just uh, way over there over there at the, in the middle for the moment then I'll take um, Tandy. Tandy has a high BE status. Doesn't mean she doesn't have other things, eh? High BE. Oh no, sorry, Tandy. Hello, Tandy. Are we putting Tandy over there? Then, are there any Tandys in the house? Then we've got another one, which is currently. We've got lots of industry experience. currently has got lots of experience. Okay. Oops. currently has got lots of experience. And then lastly, we've got competitor D. Let's call another lady's name. Uh, oh. Sisanda. And Sisanda. <laughs> I'm going to say that Sisanda has... Um, a bit of teaching, and obviously she's also got a BE status, so she's going to be there, right? 
You get it? Maybe not high on each side, maybe it's like medium, medium. So there. Okay, now, now I've got to think about myself. Where am I going to, where do I want to position myself? Well, what I have at the moment is I've got a lot of experience. Okay, I don't have a high BE status, so I've just got a zero there. I've got a high experience, I don't have much research, but I've got some teaching experience at the moment. Okay? So, sadly, this is the wrong way around now for me, but maybe I'll just change experience here, and I'll put research here, okay, and I'm going to just swap these two around quickly, okay, so now I, this is Dylan, Dylan is going to start to, Dylan is positioned over here, high teaching, and high experience because that's what I have. I don't have a high BE status, I don't have any research I put either. So I can't position myself there. Or there. But I can position myself there. <laughs> See it? Okay. Good. So <clears throat> I'm currently in the gap, positioning myself in the gap, isn't it? And what I'm going to want to do, because I don't have a lot of experience, because my competitor, there's no way I can beat Joe. He's got like years and years of experience when it comes to research. I can't beat Tandy unless I get born again to a different family, right? So I can't beat her in that. I also, okay, so Sunda, I can't beat in that area. Currently, um, he's got more experience than me because I was in the, in the industry for five, six years. He was in the industry for 10, 20 years. Okay, but I'm gonna grow in my teaching ability and so, I'm there. Okay, now, positioning strategy. Explain your positioning strategy. Would it be in the gap or close to products and services? And then I say, I am going to, oops, oops, oops. I'm going to position myself in the gap uh, related to experience and teaching. Okay. Right? And then I will explain why. Because uh, just what I explained to you now, da -da 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 I'm, I'm putting myself in the gap. Okay, now, differentiation. How will your service be different? What will pick uh, that example? We will pick uh, for a clothing, uh, for a laundry service. I just gave you an example. We will pick up the clothing. That's what can make you different as a laundry service. Or we will deliver or whatever. So I'm going to say, I'm going to be different because um, I am young, so I understand the generation of students, and I would write this into my CV as my differentiating variables. I wouldn't focus on the fact that I have a lack of research. I would focus on what is makes me different. Then I would also say, uh, I understand technology, and I use it in my teaching. Then I would talk about, I'm developing myself as a teacher, so I'm even moving further this way. I can even put in an arrow there. You see? I'm putting in an arrow there, for example, and I'm saying I'm developing myself as a teacher. These are the courses that I've done. These are the things that I'm, the in, way I'm improving myself as a teacher. And then I would also probably put in how I'm improving myself as a researcher and how I'm, imp okay, I can't improve that area. How I'm improving myself as a researcher, maybe, to move myself further along in that regard. Okay? Technology, my teaching, and what, upon which elements will you build your position? The fact that we offer convenient service in today's busy lifestyle, that's also for the washing example. Well, at the moment, what I'm differentiating myself, what I'm building my position on is mostly my uh, teaching innovations. And that is what I do presentations about at conferences in higher education. When I do conferences, it's about the teaching things that I've done to implement in my classes. I don't talk much about research. I talk about the teaching interventions. And I show people the new types of technology that I'm using, like this recording device, to, to do teaching. And then they go, wow, Dylan is so cool. He might not be doing research, but look at the cool things he is doing. We want him. Okay? 
<laughs> so I'm going to base my position on that, on this intersection here, especially moving towards teaching innovations, okay? And technology in teaching. What will you promote as your competitive advantage? This what makes your firm organization better, and I would also actually uh, do it on the same thing. I'm going to base my position on my forward thinking and use of technology in teaching. That is what I will use as my competitive advantage. It's what makes me different to all the others. The, that lecturer might have a lot of research papers, but does he have cool videos that he uses to teach his students? My videos are all over YouTube. Many of you have seen it, right? Students can access information from anywhere. I have a Facebook group. Which other lecturers do that? Maybe there are some, maybe there aren't. Okay, so that's how I'm differentiating myself. Competitive. What will be your USP? What is the key benefit you will highlight? The key thing when this lectures, when other people think about me, they must think innovation. Teaching innovation. That will be my USP. Unique selling proposition. I'm an innovative teacher. Okay? You getting it? It's my, and I have a slogan. I have a slogan even for myself. You must develop a slogan. Oh. Right? What's your slogan? Ah, I don't know. Let's think of one for me. Any ideas? <laughs> come on, come on. Help a brother out. <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, okay. Uh, teaching, what? Innovative teaching for a new tomorrow. How do you like it? What do you think? Huh? 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 You think it's too formal? How about white and black? Yeah. As soon as they see the word white, they're going to be like, it's black. So you don't want to, I don't want to focus too much on my, on the weaknesses there. Okay, so, right? So you're going to ask yourself the following questions for your positioning. Is a differentiating variable or characteristic desired by your consumers? Do universities, in my case, desire innovative teachers? Yes, they do. Listen, can I sustain this advantage over time? In other words, can I continue to develop myself to be continually innovative? Yes, I can by taking courses and etc. Can we manufacture and market the product at a price consumers are willing to pay? Can I offer my services at a price, at a salary price that they're willing to pay? Yes, I can. Is it Profitable. In other words, is it going to listen? Is it going to add value to universities, which will help them to remain profitable? Yes, I can. Innovative teaching means students are enjoying their learning. It means that etc. 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 Okay, then I develop my positioning slogans, and that's my positioning. You got it? You got it? You got it? Right. So that's an example. Now, very important. This is what I would like you to do. Because I don't want to go through every single upload that you've done so far, I want to look at one document. What I would like you to do is the following. I would like you to upload for this next submission everything that you've done so far from the beginning or up until positioning. Now you take what you've done, you put it into one document, okay, and this gives you an opportunity to make changes if you need to, obviously, if you've made mistakes in the previous submissions, I'll only mark this one that you're handing in now. So you're lucky, I'm not going to be marking those previous ones, I'm only going to be marking this one, are we clear? Everything. If it's not there, I only mark what you've given me this in the submission. Okay, thank you very much. Wednesday.